Hi everyone, this video is going to cover finding the arc length and area of a sector of circles. So first let's talk about how we can understand their formulas. So we've learned in the past um, about circumference of a circle and how that's the distance around the circle. Um, and you might remember in the past that circumference is 2 pi r. The area of a circle is the amount of space within a circle and you may remember that that's pi r squared. Well, what if we are only looking at a fraction of the circle? Well, we're going to make this very simple. We just put a fraction in front of those formulas. So here's what that would look like. If the circumference formula is 2 pi r, but if you look at this picture, let's say I just want to know the length of this bolded arc here. That's only a fraction of that circle, a fraction of that circumference. So in our formula, we are going to simply add a fraction into the circumference formula or in front of it. That's the central angle over 360. Okay, the central angle is our angle right here in the middle. Okay, I'll just put CA for central angle uh, and 360 because a whole entire circle has 360 degrees. Very similarly, let's say I only wanted the area of this shaded sector. Well, area of a circle is pi r squared, but I only want a fraction of the circle's area, so I add a fraction in front of the formula. So central angle over 360, pi r squared. I should note here, too, that there are different ways that you could calculate arc length or area of a sector, perhaps using proportions, um, but in this video, I'm going to be covering this method only. All right, let's look at some examples. Um, our directions here say to put everything for arc length and area of a sector in terms of pi. All right, number one, find the length of the bolded arc. So we're looking for arc length. So it's going to be the central angle over 360 and 2 pi r. And our radius in this case is 5. So when we're looking at this, I know I'm using the arc length formula because it's asking me length and arc. I can see that it's bolded in the picture as well. So to type this into my calculator, here's what I'm going to do. I'm doing this in terms of pi. So I'm going to type in everything besides the pi symbol. So 40 over 360. You could have simplified that if you wanted. 2 and 5. And I get 1.1 repeating. I'm going to do math 1 to change that to a fraction. And I get 10 over 9, and pi is going to be my answer here. For the length, the length is going to have whatever units the radius has in this case, so our unit would be centimeters. All right, let's look at another. Number two, now we're looking for area of a sector. Again, very obvious which formula to use. You get your key words, and in the picture, we can also see the sector is shaded. So it's all the same measurements here, right? So central angle over 360 pi radius squared. I'm just changing out the formula because now we're doing area of a sector. So I'm going to do everything the same way in my calculator, 40 over 360, and not type pi in because we're doing in terms of pi, 5 squared. Let's change that to a fraction, and I get 25 over 9 put pi back in. And remember, whenever you're finding area, it's always units squared. So my units here are centimeters squared. All right, let's look at some more. Number three, a circle has a radius of four inches. In inches, what is the length of the arc? Notice your keywords telling you what formula to use. Intercepted by a central angle of 50 degrees. All right, so arc length is central angle and you can write out this way to arc length equals, just to be clear, arc length equals 50 over 360 to pi r. If for circumference you were doing pi times diameter, you will get the same answer, by the way. All right, so I have 50 over 360 times 2 times 4. And this looks like a familiar answer from the last page. Uh, we get 10 over 9 again for this one. Put pi in, and our unit is going to be inches. All right, number four. What is the area of a sector of a circle with a radius of 6 inches and formed by a central angle that measures 60 degrees? So our area of a sector 
is equal to our central angle over 360 pi r squared. Again, we are doing this in terms of pi, so no pi in the calculator. And I got 6, so I'm going to put 6 in my answer in front of the pi. Units are squared since we're dealing with area, so 6 pi inches squared. All right, number 5. Very similar. We're looking for length. We see the arc here. Okay, so hopefully it gets repetitive a little bit. And we're just saying, okay, let me make sure I pick the right formula. So central angle over 360, 2 pi r. Okay, we're going to type that in. And I get 1.4. For 1.4, since that's not an ongoing decimal, you could leave it that way if you want. I'll just be consistent for this video and change everything to fractions when needed. Uh, so I have 7 over 5 pi, and my unit is inches. All right, let's start to look at some that are just a little bit different. Number six looks the same initially. I see area and sector, but it asks us for the area of the unshaded sector. So when I'm doing sector area here, so area of a sector, I have to realize that this central angle is not actually going to be 108. I need to find the central angle in the unshaded region. So I'm going to do 360 minus 108. And I now see that my central angle is 252. Now I can go ahead and do my problem like normal. So we just want to read carefully. Yes, to pick the correct formula between arc length and sector area, but also to just check, do I need to do something special with the central angle? So I got 126 over 5, or 25.2 pi inches squared. All right, a few more. Number 7, if the measure of angle ACB is 18 degrees, I'm going to put that in my picture here, and the length of OB is 6, so that's our radius, 6 inches, find the area of the shaded sector AOB to the nearest square inch. All right, so in order to answer this, I need to know my rules about um, inscribed angles and central angles. So an inscribed angle is always half the measure of the intercepted arc. So I know that this angle of 18 degrees will mean that this arc is 36 degrees. Now a central angle is always equal to the intercepted arc. So now I know the central angle is 36. Once I have that filled in, now I'm going to do the same process, central angle over 360 pi r squared. Okay, so I got 3.6, or as an improper fraction, 18 over 5 pi, and we're looking at inches squared. Now there's one extra little catch to this problem though, is that it's looking for the area of the sector to the nearest square inch. That tells me I'm going to need to actually put pi in my calculator here. And to the nearest square inch, that looks like 11 inches squared. All right, number eight, the central angle of a sector is 36 and the sector has an area of 10 pi centimeter squared. Find the length of the diameter. So we're going to have to do a little algebra here. So I'm going to start by just rewriting the formula just so you can see what we're looking at again. So central angle over 360 pi r squared. Let's plug in everything we know. We know the area of the sector is 10 pi. We know the central angle is 36. And in order to find the diameter, I'm going to need the radius. So I'm going to write pi r squared there. To simplify this, the first thing I would do is I would get rid of the pi's on both sides. The reason we could do that is think about dividing both sides by pi. You'd get pi over pi on both sides, which is just 1. Now, if you want to simplify the 36 over 360, that is up to you. You might feel comfortable for the algebra portion. 
looking at it and saying like, oh, 36 over 360 is the same as 1 tenth. But if you want to leave it that way, the 36 over 360, it is not necessary to reduce it. But I'll do it here just to look at some smaller numbers. To solve for R, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. That's going to give me 100 equals R squared. That means my radius is 10. So the diameter in this case is going to be double that. So 20. All right, two more. Number nine, a circle has a central angle of 80 and arc length of 88 pi. What is the radius of the circle? So we're going to do the same process here. So arc length is equal to the central angle over 360, but we're doing arc length, so 2 pi r. Plug in what we know, 88 pi equals 80 over 360, 2 pi r. All right, so in this particular case, um, I'm gonna once again, I'm going to divide both sides by pi, and I'm going to look at something a little bit simpler in that case. When I'm doing this, if you want to simplify the, um, the right-hand side of the equation, so what I mean by that is the 80 over 360 times two, Okay, we can simplify that. We get 0.4 repeating, which is 4 over 9. And I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal now to isolate the variable. So I have 9 over 4 times 88. And the radius of my circle is 198 inches in this case. All right, last problem here. Find the measure of the central angle of a sector if its area is 12 by inches squared and the radius is four inches. Okay, so we're gonna reverse things here and now we're gonna find the central angle. So the area of the sector is equal central angle over 360 pi r squared. Let's fill in what we know. So 12 pi equals, I'm just going to put x for our central angle since we don't know what that is. Pi and the radius is 4. I'm going to cross the pi's out. I'm also going to simplify um, over on the right here that this is x over 360 times 16. And if you want to simplify that a little bit more, we can merge this into one fraction. You could put the x at the back if that's a little bit more helpful for you to see it. And then to isolate that variable, I am going to multiply by the reciprocal. There are other ways you can algebraically solve for x there. This is not the only option. Uh, but as long as you get the same answer as me that I'm going to get in a second, then that means you have been doing it correctly. So 360 over 16 times 12. I got 270. Our unit is degrees, and that's our central angle. So not only do we calculate the arc length and sector areas, but we also use algebra to solve for their measurements. Okay, hopefully this video helped you understand about their formulas and where they come from, um, and also how to actually solve equations and problems working with those formulas. Check out the other videos in this playlist to learn more about circles within geometry. Thanks for watching.